On Thursday night, following a day of forward and backward finished who said what in a telephone call between the President of the United States and a military dowager, President Donald Trump tweeted this, the fake news is running insane with wacky Congresswoman Wilson D., who was secretly on an extremely individual call, and gave an aggregate lie on content. That tweet came one day after Trump initially assaulted Florida Democratic Rep. Frederica Wilson for her part in the telephone call amongst himself and Myshia Johnson, the dowager of Sergeant Law David Johnson, who was slaughtered in a trap assault in Niger. Democrat Congresswoman completely created what I said to the spouse of an officer who passed on in real life, and I have verification. Tragic, Trump tweeted on Wednesday morning. Here's the thing. It appears to be likely that, in an exceptionally troublesome spot, calling a dowager to express sympathies, what Trump was attempting to state and how Johnson and Wilson heard it ended up being two altogether different things. At one level, that is justifiable, if unfortunate. Trump, who never held any political office running for president, was attempting his best to locate the correct words in a circumstance in which there are no words. Mishia Johnson was, and is, attempting to manage the melancholy of losing a spouse and not in any case knowing every one of the actualities that prompted his passing. A typical telephone call about nothing once in a while gets confounded. One with this much psychological weight appended to it? It's anything but difficult to perceive how the two sides simply didn't associate. Be that as it may, and this is dependably the same yet with Trump, the story didn't stop there. He needed to react and react freely, to Wilson's conflict that the call had been gotten ineffectively. All of a sudden the story wasn't about the passing of Johnson. It was about whether Trump had proof that Wilson was lying. He didn't, albeit White House Squeeze Secretary Sarah Sanders said a few people, including head of staff John Kelly, were tuning into the call and thought the president took care of it well. About what, precisely, Trump had said. Over Wilson being wacky over whether she subtly tuned into the call amongst Trump and Johnson. She didn't, the call was gone up against speakerphone. This storyline has moved toward becoming derider for Trump. In for all intents and purposes each circumstance to date in his administration, and in his chance as a hopeful, when Trump has been given the opportunity to take the more ethical route, to act in a path steady with the 43 men who have held the workplace before him. He has veered off onto the low street. Take Charlottesville. The savagery and bigotry in plain view from the racial oppressors and neo-Nazis accumulated to challenge the expulsion of a statue of Robert E. Lee could have been a minute in which Trump denounced fanaticism and loathe. He could have utilized the minute to address his own past dalliances with supremacist canine shrieking amid the crusade. He could have made an interest to the nation's better blessed messengers. He did none of that. He centered, both in the prompt repercussions of Charlottesville and in the many months that have taken after, on the possibility that the savagery was on the two sides. A minute that could have been utilized as a hopping-off point for a fair discussion about race transformed into a drain-level quarrel over how right, or not, Trump was in his judgment of the radical left. While Charlottesville is the most prominent case of Trump's low streetism, there's heap different ones, some huge, some little all through his administration. His choice to start a quarrel over NFL players stooping amid the national song of devotion. His choice to take part in a schoolyard verbally abusing challenge with North Korean tyrant Kim Jong-un. His inconsequential battle about the group measure at his introduction. His assaults alone cabinet individuals, most outstandingly Attorney General Jeff Sessions. The savaging of the unique advice examination concerning Russian inclusion in the 2016 decision. His fixation on showing how incredible his reaction to the Puerto Rico pulverization has been. Unendingly. What's more, on. The basic actuality is that Trump's slow street way to deal with the administration is a key break from every one of the men, Democrats and Republicans, who have held the administration before him. Though those presidents frequently declined to punch back when assaulted or left something inferred that they truly needed to state, Trump is submitted just to substantiating himself right. What's more, he will fall back on any way to do as such. The reason is self-evident, Trump's whole life, each of the 71 years, 
has been centered around winning no matter what. His mental self-view as an enduring champ takes need, dependably. The key is am I winning instead of, as with the man who preceded Trump, is this something worth being thankful for the nation? It is highly unlikely this drawn-out battle amongst Trump and Johnson, Wilson over the passing of an American warrior in Niger is something to be thankful for the nation. In the event that we can't concur, regardless of who said what to whom, that the subject of has been a gigantic diversion from A, grieving law David Johnson and B, getting to the base of what precisely happened to Johnson and the three different warriors slaughtered in that snare, we are in an awful place. Also, we are in that terrible place in no little part because of the way that the man in the White House is perpetually constrained to take the low street.